Hey, what is going on guys? It is Heidi Z or HC Gaming coming back to you with another YouTube video. I know that the phone is a little bit farther away from me than it usually is. Um, it's because we are in my bedroom. Um, the pups are sleeping. Baby Vi is right here. Pen is snoring right here. Um, but we are here for NFL Week 12 picks for you guys. Um, pre-recording as always um let's go ahead and get into it and we have a lot more than just the games to talk about this week i have a lot of things on my list that i want to talk about um bay vi is going to be my co-pilot um you ready bay vi she's tired um but yeah you guys haven't seen the room yet um the fan is on um have a bunch of Lion King stuff. The bedroom is Lion King themed. Um, we just don't have Lion King bed stuff. We have the lion picture over there. We have a couple other ones that we want to get, but we have to wait for them to restock at Athena's work. But let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I just realized I haven't picked Thursday's game yet, because um, that one was, it's just a tough pick for me to make. It's kind of my toss up. Um, but it is a very, very, very crucial game. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to the, the cell phone for this one just to kind of look at it and see what we can kind of expect from it. Um, I don't want you to play the videos for it. Um, The Colts defense is pretty good, so that kind of balances out the fact that the Texans defense is, the Texans offense is good, um, but then again, the Texans defense is not that good, and the Colts offense is kind of mediocre, um, but they both have tremendous rushing games, apparently, um, so, you know, Colts are sitting at fourth with rushing, and the Texans are sitting at fifth. Um, but I feel like overall this game is going to be a toss-up. Last time they met, the Colts did win. Um, granted, I'm pretty sure that last game they played, Andrew Luck was playing, if I remember correctly. Granted, Brissett's a great quarterback, but still, um, it's a crucial matchup. Um, crucial, crucial matchup, um, for this game. And I just... It's a huge toss-up for me, but my gut is telling me to go with the Texans, so that's who we're going to go ahead and pick for that. Um, moving on, I don't know why I always like to lean over when I talk to you guys about these games, um, but yeah. Next up for Sunday's games, we have, that first game was on Fox, by the way, um, we have the, on CBS the 6-4 and four Raiders versus the three and seven Jets. Um, this is a huge game for the Raiders. Um, the Jets have a very, very good rushing defense and, you know, Josh Jacobs is a very phenomenal runner. Um, but that number one run defense, we, we are going to be looking at some tough things here. Um, but I think that we can go ahead and prevail, especially if they're trying so hard to stop our run. Our passing attack should be able to get out there and get us the W, so I'm picking the Raiders to win that game. And I say it's a very crucial game because we're sitting at 6-4 and four right now. The Chiefs are on a bye week right now. And the Chiefs' next game is against my Raiders. So if we win this game, we'll be tied with the Chiefs for the top spot in the AFC West. And then that makes next week's game even more crucial. So that's why we need to get a step ahead here, win this game, and then puts us in a better position to fight even harder next week. Um, moving on. Next game is on Fox. It's between the 8-2 and two Seahawks and the 5-5 five and five Eagles. And I'm just going to say this right now. Philly would be way better if their wide receivers could catch. A lot of the games that I've watched this year, a lot of the highlights that I've watched, Philly just does not catch the ball. They do not. It's it's ridiculous. You you can't have your quarterback throwing you dots, but you can't catch the damn ball. Like, it's ridiculous. So, um, you know, the Seahawks are a great team. 
Um, you know, if the if Philly was a little bit healthier on defense and if their offense could actually catch the ball, and you know they had some of their wide receivers who are injured right now in the lineup. They'd be all set to be a phenomenal team, but they don't. So I'm picking the Seahawks to win that matchup. Moving on, we have a game on Fox between the three six and one Lions and the one and nine Redskins. And I just want to talk about this. It Dwayne Haskins is in his rookie year in the NFL, and what does he get? He's at the, the point right now, you know, even though it's his rookie year, the um. The Redskins have Alex Smith, who is still injured, but he's still their technical starting quarterback. Um, they ended up benching Case Keenum. Don't know if he got hurt, but they benched him. So Haskins could play. But I'm sorry, you can't put a good young quarterback in bet behind an offensive line that does just doesn't want to win. They don't want to play hard. I saw... I've seen a couple videos this year of Dwayne Haskins begging and pleading with his O-line, asking him, asking them what he needs to do to help them. And constantly, I see the same O-line men that he's talking to laughing over and over and over again. And Dwayne Haskins, he knows he has a lot to prove. He's trying to help this 1-9 team win, at least muster up a couple other wins, so, you know, they don't put all the blame on him because honestly in the NFL that is what we do we put the blame on the quarterbacks on the coaches but sometimes it's not the head coach sometimes it's not the quarterback sometimes it's your lousy ass offensive linemen who don't want to block for you and just want you to not even have a career because they don't even want to win they're going out there they're like okay I'm getting this paycheck it doesn't matter if we win or lose and that, that just tends to be the mentality when you have those teams that have those those worst records. But it's like, you never, you always play hard. You, that's, that's uncalled for. Um, but regardless, I'm not picking the Redskins to win. Because after I saw that, I've seen, you know, his offensive linemen just continually disrespect him. How are you going to help your team win games when you have offensive linemen who don't respect you? I don't care that he's younger than most of the offensive linemen or anything else. That's your quarterback. You respect him. He's trying to go out there. He's trying to help you win games. That is what matters when it comes to any type of sport. If you have somebody who's going out there putting their body on the line week in and week out for you trying to help you win games and you're not helping him and you're putting his body on the line even more, that is uncalled for. But regardless of that, I'm picking the Lions to go ahead and win this one even though they do have Matt Stafford who is still out, I believe, with that injury. Um... Just that O-line, I, how are you going to win without having your O-line block for your quarterback? It's just not acceptable. Um, moving on, next game is on CBS between the 5-5 five and five Panthers and the 8-2 and two Saints. And the Saints are just a better team. It hurts me to say this because I do have a very special place in my heart for the Panthers. But Christian McCaffrey cannot do everything. He had 20-plus fantasy points last week. But he can't do it all by himself. Um, so, you know, Saints are the better team. They're going to go ahead and win this game. The Panthers need to figure out. I, I honestly don't. I think if they get Cam Newton back and healthy, you know, no issues, then they'll be a really, really, really serious contender. But... I like Allen, but I just don't feel like this is it for the Panthers. I don't feel like he's the one. Maybe he can develop a little further into the year, but I just don't know how I feel about it at this point. Moving on. Next game on Fox between the 2-8 and eight Dolphins and the 4-6 and six Browns. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the Browns to win this game. Um, but, you know... Um, even when the Browns win, they find a way to lose. And we found that out last week for Thursday Night Football against the Steelers with the whole um, Rudolph Garrett incident that did happen. And that was just absolutely uncalled for. Um, it was a very late hit on Rudolph from what I saw. And it looked to me from the views that I was seeing. Granted, I wasn't there, so I can't speak for either of these players. 
Um, it looked like Rudolph's hand got stuck in the helmet. I'm not sure. Either way, they're still, you know, Garrett is being disciplined and then, you know, Pouncy got disciplined, but honestly, I don't even blame Pouncy. You're gonna get you're gonna get up and protect your quarterback. And, you know, it's just it was just uncalled for all around. I feel like, you know, the league did what they were supposed to do with those suspensions. I do feel like Garrett should be suspended indefinitely for the rest of the year. And in fact, maybe even some into next year because that's uncalled for. You, uncalled for. You don't take a helmet off of somebody and bash him in the head with it. And he's proved numerous times this year that he can be a dirty player. And, you know, he gets away with calls all the time. All these late hits, lean with the helmet, everything like that. Um, and he keeps getting away with it. And yet the league suspended Vontez Perfect, who I know has a history. I understand that. And I'm not just saying this as a Raider fan, but I'm saying because of the hit that he did, that he got suspended for it was it's not at all a hit that you know should have gotten him suspended for as long as he's suspended um and i now with this new new thing that's happening with garrett i think that perfect is trying to appeal again his suspension saying i didn't do some dirty like that and the colts player who perfect did hit at the time said that it it was a football hit he didn't mean to to lead with his head and hit me like that um, but, you know, Perfect has tried to clean up his act since he's come to the Raiders, but now, you know, with this happening, I just, you know, discipline is in the correct place for this situation, but I feel like the league does need to reassess other suspensions, um, at least for Perfect, because Perfect was not trying to be malicious at all when he did hit, um, the Colts player that he did when we played that game. Anyways. I picked the Browns to win against the Dolphins. Moving on. Um, on CBS, we have the 5-5 five five Steelers versus the 0-10 Bengals. And, you know, this is a rivalry game for them. Steelers and Bengals, they have their issues going back. Even before they had Perfect, um, Bengals no longer have Perfect. That kind of fueled the fire even more. But it's a very, very physical game that they play whenever they play each other. And it's a huge rivalry game um, that they end up playing. But... Simply because the Bengals are the dumpster fire of the NFL, I am picking the Steelers to go ahead and win this one. Moving on, we have on Fox the 2-8 and eight Giants versus the 4-6 and six Bears. And I don't, you know, the Bears just aren't very, they're not playing very good right now. And I feel like the Giants, if they rally behind their quarterback, they rally behind Saquon Barkley, they can go ahead and go out there and win this game. Because um, I don't see, you know... Over the last, um, I don't know how many games, yeah, since week eight, the Bears have averaged 14.3 points per game, and that's the third fewest in the NFL, so, you know, if the Giants can keep the Bears from scoring, which Trubisky does pretty well on his own, I can see the Giants winning this one, so that's why I went ahead and picked them. Moving on. On CBS, we have the 3-7 and seven Broncos versus the 7-3 and three Bills. And I just don't feel like the Broncos are that good of a team, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the Bills to go ahead and go out there and win this game. Moving on, we have a game on Fox between the 3-7 and seven Buccaneers and the 3-7 and seven Falcons. And I feel like the Falcons are going to go ahead and outlast the Bucks this game and go ahead and win. Because the Falcons, the last couple weeks, have won some pretty tough matchups. Um, which, you know... I feel like was good for them. So, I'm picking them to go ahead and win this game. Moving on. On CBS, we have the 4-6 and six Jaguars and the 5-5 five and five Titans. And I just feel like... I feel like the Jags should not have taken out Minshew Mania. Um, I feel like Gardner Minshew should still be in there playing. I know that Nick Foles was their starting quarterback and he came back from injury, but I feel like he's doing just fine, but I just feel like the Titans are going to go out, go ahead and go out there and beat the, the Jaguars. Moving on. On Fox, we have the 6-4 and four Cowboys versus the 9-1 and one Patriots. And the Patriots are going to win. Um, I know their offense hasn't been as great the last couple weeks, um, but I feel like they're going to go ahead and go out there and win unless 
the Cowboys have an absolutely phenomenal phenomenal game and just decide to blow out the Patriots, which I that's definitely something that could happen. I just don't see it happening. Um, but if they get Amari Cooper, they get Michael Gallup, Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott firing on all cylinders, I feel like they could go ahead and go out there and get the W, but I'm picking the Patriots to win because that is what my gut is telling me to do. So yeah, moving on. Game on NBC. It's the Sunday night football games between the 8-2 and two Packers and the 9-1 and one 49ers. The 49ers are just a better team. The Packers don't have that good of a defense in my opinion. Um, so I'm picking the 49ers to win that one. It's There's not really much science that goes into it. Um, I know that the 49ers have been battling some injuries. They're hoping to have Kittle back this weekend. And if they do, that would just weigh so much more in their favor. But at this point, I'm not sure if he's playing. They said he's going to be more of a game time decision again. So hopefully it all works out in their favor. But I feel like the, 40, the 49ers are still going to go out there and win this one. Moving on to Monday night. We have the 8-2 Ravens versus the 6-4 Rams. And I feel like Lamar Jackson is going to go ahead and go out there and light up the Rams defense. He's going to dot them up. He's going to absolutely light them up. And they're not going to know what to do with him. So um, I feel like the Ravens are going to go ahead and win that game. But, you know, when you think about the mobile quarterback thing in the NFL and everything like that, Lamar Jackson has an absolutely phenomenal arm. Absolutely phenomenal. But he's also a great runner, so I feel like if any team can really assess and beat a team that has a mobile quarterback, it's going to be one of those teams in the NFC West. Um, because in the NFC West, you play against Russell Wilson. Um, and now, down in um, Arizona, they have Kyler Murray. Both of them can be mobile quarterbacks, great arms, kind of very, very similar to um, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's just a little, little bit taller than Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray. Um, but, you know, if any team could really, you know, assess that, it would be one of those NFC West teams that do go up against mobile quarterbacks twice. Uh, four, it's more like four times a year with the different teams that have mobile quarterbacks, and sometimes even more often, depending on what other teams they play. But I feel like, you know, the Rams could have, have a chance there, but I don't see the Ravens letting up on the gas pedal, I feel like they're just going to go full throttle and just decimate them. So, yeah. Um, my games of the week, I picked the Colts versus the Texans because there's so much on the line there with that game. And also the Packers versus the 49ers because, again, there is a lot on the line with that game. Um, you know, it keeps the 49ers having their foot on the gas pedal and, you know, doesn't give the Seahawks any room to come in and try to overtake them or anything like that. And the teams we have on buys this week, we have the 8-3 and three Vikings next at Seattle, um, which I'm not sh even sure what to even think about that game. That game is kind of going to be a toss-up for me next week when I do my picks. Um, then we have the 4-7 and seven Chargers at Denver, and I feel like they can go ahead and go out there and get a W, but again, we'll reassess the picks when it comes to next week. Then we have the 371 Cardinal Cardinals next versus the LA Rams, which I I feel like they're gonna take the L, but again, I always reassess before that next week does come up. And then we have the 74 Chiefs next versus my Oakland Raiders. Granted, it is a home game for the Chiefs. Um, I feel like, you know, Derek Carr has been playing phenomenal this year. So I feel like next week we should be pretty good. We could go in there and get a W. Um we just make, need to make sure that everybody comes out there playing with heart and, you know, realizing how much is on the line. Because before this season started, you know, we had, we had Antonio Brown. We had, um, you know, a lot of promise with our rookies. Our rookies are doing absolutely phenomenal. Crosby, whew, he's going to be a problem. And I looked at the comparison of the numbers through this many weeks in their rookie seasons between Crosby and Khalil Mack. And... I feel like we found our replacement. Um, absolutely phenomenal player. He's super, super humble. Great guy. Um, you know, all about the team. All about, you know, helping helping the Raiders win and becoming a part of that culture that we have 
in Oakland is very, very important, and that's something that I feel like all of our rookies have kind of embodied um, since coming into the league. Josh Jacobs, he's absolutely phenomenal. Hunter Renfro, um, it's just we got a good squad. They just need to go in there next week when we play the Chiefs and have some heart and desire to really win that game because we could be atop the AFC West depending on what happens next week and depending on what happens this week. So there are a couple tiles that need to fall into place for us to be able to overtake. Um, but, you know, even if we don't win today and we win next week, then we'd be tied for first in the AFC West. But, yeah. So, yeah, that's it for this week, you guys. I think that would make us tied. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Because if we win this week, we'll be 7-4. and four. Or if we don't, we'll be 6-5. and five, And then we go next week, play them. If we win, then we'll be 7-5. and five, And they'll be 7-5. and five, So we'd be tied. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the bedroom. I actually really like the lighting right here. Um, I know my glasses do tend to get a little bit of that reflection, so, so I do try to look down a little bit more. Um, but yeah, um, go ahead and hit that like button. If you in enjoyed this video, go ahead and comment down below. Give me some of your picks for this week, um, what you think is going to happen, anything like that. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel and you enjoy my content. We do daily uploads, so go ahead and hit that bell notification as well. Um, join the Zoom Nation. Become a Zoomian. If you want a little more little bit more background on that go ahead and check out our website down below i also have started linking the silver keep the mystery of silver keep playlist down in the description as well so if you want to go back and check that out you could most definitely do that but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys much love and peace